Oh, well, apparently uh, this recording system cuts me off at 10 minutes instead of 15. So um, I'll try to pick up where I left off and I'll go a little bit faster. Um, so he's got this beardless boyish face, very young, very fair. Um, he has no features to speak of, nose peeling, little blue eyes. Like his his entire face seems to be um, m- like small and plain and like like when water runs over rock and it sort of wears away the features, he seems to be like eroded almost. Um, He's got little blue eyes um, and a smile and frown that chases each other over an open countenance like sunshine and shadow on a windswept plain. This is such a pretty image, but you have to think about what it says. So imagine like a, a grassy field and it's a sunny day and they're Fluff, big fluffy clouds in the sky and there's a wind and so the wind is pushing the clouds by and that when they come between the sun and the ground they're casting those shadows so you get like moments of brightness moments of darkness moments of brightness moments of darkness and the harlequin's face is like that he smiles and he frowns and he smiles and he frowns and he smiles and he frowns and if you just imagine doing that like do that in your own like wherever you are smile and frown like that you can sort of give it of feeling for the Harlequin. Um, he's, he's a weird, he's a weird guy. He, he's been, he's been out here a long time. Um, all right. So let's look at the next paragraph. Okay. So that was paragraph three A. So here's paragraph three B. Um, so the Harlequin says, look out captain. There's a snag lodged, uh, in here last night. Um, what another snag? I confess I swore shamefully. I always like this moment where Marla's trying to land the boat and the Harlequin's like, oh, be careful. And Marla's like, what another thing I have to look out for? And he cusses. And he, he like feels bad that he cussed. Um, that's where, that's the kind of person Marla is at this point. Um, uh, I had nearly hold my cripple to finish off that charming trip. Um, so he's like, I almost wrecked this boat at the very last minute, minute, almost wrecked it. So the harlequin on the bank turned his little pug nose up to me. You English? He asked all smiles. Are you? I shouted from the wheels. The smiles vanished and he shook his head as if sorry. So, um, never mind. Um, so they had this sort of conversation back here and they're like, he is up there. And obviously that he is going to be Kurtz. Um, and with a toss of his head up the hill and became gloomy all of a sudden. So he's up there, the Harlequin says, and he becomes very like sad all of a sudden. His face was like the autumn sky overcast one moment and bright the next. So you get that idea of him going back and forth again with his emotions, very temperamental kind of individual. Um, And he he has a lot of comparisons to nature. Like this, the Harlequin seems seems um capricious as like nature is so it when you have a person that is that sort of changeable and that sort of transitory you you want to look at them very carefully um and then you have to look see what motivates the cause what motivates the change there for the harlequin is we, we get the mention of kurtz so kurtz is Kurtz is a, like a, a, a spot for the Harlequin. Like there's something going on there. Um, so then you get this part where when the manager escorted by the pilgrims, all of them armed to the teeth uh, had gone up to the house. This chat came on board. Um, and so he waits for everybody with all their weapons to go to the shacks. So this should be odd. Like, okay, that they're, they're nervous about their lives. They're nervous to be this far out into the wilderness, but they're going up to the house, you know, completely armed. And we already know that the manager is creepy. Um, and so here the Harlequin is trying to say, well, you know, the natives aren't a big deal. They're simple people. Um, and I took me all my time to keep them off. So there's, like they're simple and they're not a problem, but yet it seems like the Harlequin has had issues. Oh, they meant no harm. Not exactly. So we get this, we get this again, like, oh, they didn't mean to harm me, but well, not really this back and forth with the Harlequin where he doesn't really seem to have a steady answer. Um, and then he looks, he goes, oh, you know, your pilot house wants a cleanup. Well, why does, why is, why is the pilot house dirty? Well, it's, it's got, it's got blood all in it because the helmsman has died there. And there's just this little moment of, oblivious heartlessness like obviously somebody has had a serious accident in this um in this in this cabin here and the harlequin seems either uncaring or un- unable to notice um but he suggests that they blow the whistle and that will scare off the natives um and he he's just so he rattled away at such a rate and quite overwhelmed me like he's so chatty 
Like he doesn't seem to stop talking. And, um, and Marlo, he, he sort of, Marlo says, and he actually hinted laughing that was such a case because Marlo says, well, don't you talk to Mr. Kurtz? Um, and the, the Harlequin says, oh, you don't talk to that man. You listen to him. Um, and there's, that's an important statement, um, especially when you're following it with this dash here. You listen to him. He exclaimed with severe exaltation. If you don't know what that word is, you should probably look it up. Um, you might have heard it in maybe some Christmas carols or at church. There's a reason. Uh, but now he waved his arm and the twinkling in his eye was in the uttermost depths of despondency. So despondency is like deep, deep dark depression and sadness so he goes from this like reverence to this deep sadness again he's jumping those emotions so quickly in a moment he came up again with a jump possessed himself uh both my hands shook them continuously while he gabbled so he grabs marlo's hands and he's like brother sailor honor pleasure delight introduce myself russian son of an arch priest government of tambov what tobacco english tobacco the excellent english tobacco what now that's brotherly smoke all right so like this dude right here loses it in this moment um and the, like these ideas of these broken and incomplete phrases they say something about him as a character as a person and you have to look closely at not so much as what he says but how he's saying it um to get a view for what he's like as a person um so paragraph five the Marlowe gives him a pipe. The pipe smoothed him, and I gradually made out he had run away from school, had gone to sea on a Russian ship. So you get sort of the backstory here of the Harlequin. Um, and Marlowe's like, you never told me, you know, why did you come here? And he goes, here I met Mr. Kurtz, youthful, youthfully solemn and reproachful. So there's two emotions that don't seem to go together. Um he came here, he had to convince some people to bring him, um, and then he wandered for nearly two years all alone, so cut off from everybody and everything. This is all important information about the Harlequin that should tell you something about him and who he is. Um, he's like, I'm not so young, I'm 25. Um, and then he goes here, he talks about this idea of this Dutch trader, and he has this issue. Um, I've sent him one small lot of ivory a year ago, so he can't call me a little thief when I get back. He, he's he's probably gotten here from nefarious means, um, and he's trying to he's trying to like make ivory money to get to get maybe buy off a debt. It, it's very unclear. Um, then you get down here. He gets this issue about the book. He's like, oh, that's my book. And Marla's like, oh, I read it. You wrote in it. Yeah, I made notes in Russian. Um, uh, and and um, he says down here, uh, did they want to kill you? Um, I asked. Oh, no, he cried and checked himself. Why did they attack us? I, I, pers I pursued. He has ed hesitated and then shamefacedly. They don't want him to go. So this is a crucial idea here. They, the natives, don't want Kurtz to go. Don't they, I asked curiously. He nodded a, a, he nodded a nod full of mystery and wisdom. I tell you, he cried, this man has enlarged my mind. Now the man is Kurtz. This man has enlarged my mind. He opened his arms wide, staring at me with little blue eyes that were perfectly round. So you get this. He's tiny little blue eyes that are like perfectly little round balls in his own, in his little head. I always get this image that they're like, mm -hmm. there's, there's a creepiness to that. Um, that you should sort of be picking up some things about the Harlequin that are important. This idea that he is from a religious background. Um, he is Russian. So you're thinking like Orthodox Russian religion here he uses a lot of religious um diction and, and references and then you get these things down here where he seems to have an almost shockingly uh broad and um important f view of kurtz that is that should be worrisome all right so um that's mostly those two pages. Um, I hope they helped you a little bit. Um, and if they don't, uh, sorry, uh, read better. Um, bye.